Hi, Steady. Glad you're here. Sorry about any technical difficulties we might be having. Uh, I think we're up and rolling now. And uh, thank God for that. Um, we're glad to know that you've had a, a good week. Um, I do want to mention that we should pray for Sir Amber Gurney. She had a mishap today. She, she had a bike, a bike accident. I think she's going to be okay, but we need to pray for her that God would touch her and be with her and uh, and heal her. Um, also, uh, some have been asking about giving and. Uh, we now have three ways to give. Um, you can give, of course, in person. You can give uh, by mailing it in, mailing your offering in at uh, Apostolic Truth Tabernacle, P.O. Box 422, Sierra Vista, Arizona, 85636. Or you can give online now, and uh, we've got that up and running. So uh, there's three ways to give if you um, want to give. Uh, we're going to get into the Bible study in just a moment, but I'd like to ask you to pray with me that God would touch and move if there's anybody at your house or anybody that you know that is uh, not feeling well. This would be a good time just to stop and have prayer for them. We had good prayer uh, last night here at our house. And I hope that you felt the presence of God at your house like we did here. But let's go to God in prayer and ask Him to touch us today. Move up on us in this Bible study. Lord, we thank you, God, for your blessing. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your goodness and your kindness. God, we ask, God, that your hand would be upon our lives. God, we ask, God, that you touch those that are hurting, God, those that are sick, God, those that are are troubled. Lord, we ask, God, that your spirit would move upon them all. God, we ask not only that you do that, but we ask, God, that you touch us in this Bible study tonight and help us and give us direction. Uh, let us, God, be able to follow the leading of your spirit. Let your power touch us, Jesus. Help us, God, to do your will. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you can turn with me to the book of Titus. The book of Titus, uh, chapter number 1 and verse number 2. We're going to be reading one passage of scripture from Titus, chapter 1, verse number 2. And then we're going to be reading another passage of scripture from Hebrews, chapter number 6 and verse number 18. And we'll get right into this Bible study tonight. We're talking about the promises of God. The promises of God. Titus, chapter 1, verse number 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. And I think it's important for us to know that God made some promises before the world even began. Uh, the Bible says here in Titus chapter 1, verse number 2, that he promised, made these promises before the world began. And I'm glad to know that he cannot lie. It is not even a possibility for God to lie. Hebrews chapter number 6, verse number 18. Hebrews 6, verse number 18. I was looking at Hebrews 5, excuse me. Hebrews 6, verse number 18 says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who hath fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. And so both of these scriptures proclaim the fact that God cannot lie, uh, that it is an impossibility for him. It is so against the nature and the character of God that it is uh, impossible for him to lie. I don't know, uh, I'm sure that uh, everybody... Uh, of any age uh, that is on this Bible study tonight, I'm sure that you've had people lie to you and you've had them even uh, look you right in the eyes and, and lie to you and 
you knew they were lying. But uh, uh, we serve a God that it is impossible for him to lie. That first of all, he would never want to lie. And then second of all, that if he wanted to, he certainly could not do so because of the impossibility. In Romans 4, verse number 21, it says, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Not only is God not going to lie uh, because he just wants to deceive you, as some people would lie to try to deceive you, but God uh, is not going to lie because he cannot do what he says he could do. Now, there's sometimes that people don't intend to make a promise and not keep it. They intend to keep that promise that they made, but something comes up and it may become out of their power or out of their ability to be able to keep the promise that they made. And, and they may break their promise, even though that it hurts them and, and they weren't desiring to do that just because they were incapable of keeping the promise. But Romans 4.21 says, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And so God is able to fulfill every promise that he's made. Now there's a, a lot of promises uh, in the Bible that he's made that I don't want to claim those promises. We uh, have heard an old, old song that says every promise in the book is mine. Well, there's some promises that God made to the ungodly and some promises he made to Satan that I don't want any part of. But I, I want the blessings and the and the 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 benefits of the promises of God. So he is able to fulfill his promises. His promises have great value. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter number 1, 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 4, I believe it is. 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 4 says, Hereby, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these that you might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we find that not only he is able to fulfill his promises, but the Bible says here that his promises have great value. Uh, according uh, whereby we are given to, and to us exceeding great and precious promises. His promises have great value today. And uh, I have uh, compiled a list of 10 promises and they're are so many more in the Word of God that we could talk about, but this would go on, uh, this Bible study would go on for far into the night uh, if we tried to find every promise that was a good promise of God. But I've, I've got 10 that I want to mention and I want to talk about, about the promises of God. In the book of Psalms, Psalms number 30 and verse number 5, it talks about better days. This may not be your best day in your life that you live today. You may have had a tough day. It may have been difficult for you. And, and I know for many that this time is difficult for us. And, and even uh, not being able, able to gather together as a church group and, and as a family of God is difficult for us. But the Bible promises us, God promises us in his word in Psalms 30, verse number five. It says, for his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He has promised us there's going to be better days. If you are experiencing a difficult day, or maybe you're not experiencing a difficult day, but if if you have a day comes up in the future that is very difficult for you, I want to promise you today that God has promised that it's not going to last forever. That weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
He's a faithful God. But in the book of Psalms, chapter Psalms 34, and verse number 19, it says that He is a delivering God, that He has promised deliverance. Psalms 34, verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's kind of a startling uh, passage of Scripture or phrase that that would startle some people because it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That lets us know that there's going to be difficult days at times. There's going to be problems at times. But it goes on to say, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And so we have a promise that not that we won't ever have any time of affliction, but that when we do, that God is going to deliver us and God is going to take care of us. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, and verse number 2, it's a powerful passage of Scripture that uh, we've heard before and you're probably familiar with, but it says in Isaiah 43 and 2, it says, When thou passest through the waters... I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. He promises us that he'll be with us. When we go, we go through deep places and, and difficult places, he promises us that he will be with us. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 13, he makes this promise. And, and Isaiah it was a, almost a poetic kind of statement. But in Hebrews 13, verse number 5, it's a very matter-of-fact uh, comment or statement. It says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. If you are feeling God forsaken today, or if you do in the future, I want to remind you that that is a lie from the father of liars, from the, the prince of, of the devils. That is a lie uh, from the, the, the pits of hell that God would forsake you. For the Bible promises us, God promises us, and God cannot lie, He promises us, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'm glad we serve a God that we can depend on. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we serve a God that we can have confidence in, that when He says, I won't leave you, He won't leave us. There may be times that we feel like uh, that we're God forsaken, but I want to promise you that He is always there. And you keep your confidence in Him. And your feeling that you had is going to kind of melt away into peace. In the book of Romans, chapter number 8, verse 28, there's another promise. That promise is all things work together for the good. Romans 8, 28. And we know. Everybody said, we know. All right. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. There's a couple of qualifiers there. Do you love God? Are you called according to His purpose? Are you doing your best to try to do the purpose of God? If you are doing those things, you can have confidence that God is going to work things for your good. It didn't say that everything was going to always be good, but He can work things out that looks dismal, that looks uh, discouraging. He'll work things out to bring them about to something that is good. When Joseph was sold into slavery uh, by his brothers, it was a day that did not look good to him. It had already been a hard day before he was sold into slavery. It had been a difficult day, but he didn't know that God was working it out for his good and for his family's good. So trust in God. Have confidence in God. 
believe him that he's going to work out all things together for good because you love him and you're called according to his purpose. In the book of Malachi, it tells about another promise of God. Malachi chapter number 3, verse number 10. It talks about another promise. The God promises material blessings. He didn't promise that we would all be uh, wealthy beyond our dreams. He didn't promise that, that we would all be millionaires or billionaires. But he did promise material blessings. Uh, Malachi verse number 3 and verse, chapter number 3 rather, and verse number 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now wherewith the Lord of the hosts, saith the Lord of hosts, for I will not open you windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will re rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, Neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. God has promised us. Again, here's a promise that is qualified, bringing the tithes into the storehouse. Why? That there may, may be meat in mine house, and prove me if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And so God promises material things. He also promises very basic things like answer to prayer. In the book of Mark, chapter number 11. Mark, chapter number 11. And verse number 24, I believe it is. Jesus is speaking and he says, Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you will receive them and ye shall have them. God promises answers to prayer. God promises answers to prayer. Uh, sometimes the answers may surprise us. Sometimes it may not be what we expected it was going to be, but God knows what he's doing, and he promises answers to prayer. The book of John, St. John chapter number 14, and verse number 12, St. John chapter number 14 and verse number 12. He promises us uh, power for the work of God. John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Also, and I believe it's Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, he says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. God has promised us that if we are involved in the work of God, if we're sincerely involved in the work of God, that he will give us power to be overcomers. He will give us power to do the work of God. The ones God calls, God equips. A lot of times people have thought, uh, God, I can't do this, like Moses thought about his speech. God, I can't do this. I, I don't know how. I'm not going to be able to be understood. Uh, I probably thought to myself, I don't know if I can do this, what I'm doing right now, uh, as a matter of fact. But what God, who God calls, God will equip, and he'll give us power to be an overcomer. I'm glad that there is a promise concerning the work of God, that he would give me power to be able to do the work of God. Psalms 34, going back to Psalms 34, verse number 18. We read, I believe, from Psalms 34, verse 19. Going back to Psalms 34, verse number 18. It talks about that God would be close to 
someone who repents. You ever messed up and felt so far away from God and can't believe and question yourself, can't believe I made this mistake and can't believe that I'm where I am and can't believe that I'm in the fix that I'm in. If you've been there, if you've been there, Psalms 34, 19 has an answer for you. It says many, excuse me, Psalms 34, 18, excuse me. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. And so Psalms 34, 18 says that God will be close to you if you have a contrite spirit. If you have a repentant spirit, that's what it's saying. If your heart is broken from the sorrow from your sin, God is right there, that he'll be right there. If you call out to him with a repentant heart, he'll be right there, and you'll, you'll feel his presence start to flood in on your life as you uh, repent. Repentance always brings us into the presence of God. Repentance always brings us closer to God. So the Bible says he's close to those that are of a broken heart and saves those that are of a contrite spirit. James chapter number four, and we're almost to the end here. James chapter number four. In verse number seven, the ninth promise that I found that I wanted to talk about tonight was there's victory over the devil. There's victory over the devil. I'm glad to know today that there is victory over the devil. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In our own strength, in our own power, in our own ability, in our fleshly ability, uh, we could not, we could not hope to overcome the devil. But the Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God. You notice before it says resist, it says submit. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Get right with God. Get under the authority of God. Get under the power of God. Get under the guidance and the leadership of God. Submit to God. And then it says, resist the devil. After you've gotten under God's guidance and power and authority, you have the strength then, not in your own flesh, but you have the strength to resist the devil. And you not only have the strength to resist him, but something will happen whenever you do resist him. The Bible says, God's promise says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. He will get out of your face. If you are submitting to God and you are under God's authority and you resist the devil, the Bible teaches us it's a promise from God. And then the last promise, promise number 10 in the book of 1 John, chapter number 2. And I suppose this is the most important promise. And, and that, that's difficult to say because all of God's promises are very important. But this one is such a powerful thing. This is what we are living for. This is what we're hoping for. This is what we are striving for. And that is, He promises eternal life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, and this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. If we get our heart right with God, if we repent, really ask God to forgive those sins, if we're baptized in Jesus' name, if we receive the Holy Ghost, and are filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. 
If we live a godly life, if we live a holy life before God, strive to please Him, strive to do what He wants us to do, there's a promise for us. And that promise is, and this is the promise that He has promised us, even eternal life. I think it would be good right now if we close this Bible study by having prayer together. And let's close this Bible study with a prayer of repentance, just as we said earlier, because remember, God is close to those with repented hearts. Maybe you've been praying today and you've already uh, repented, but Let's ask God, if there's any lingering thing in my life, would you cleanse it? Would you purify it? Would you wash me? Would you take every sin away in my life? Could we pray together, Lord Jesus? God, we come to you, God, asking God for your spirit to move upon us. God, I ask God for your power to move upon me. God, I want to be clean. I want to be pure. I want to be God without spot, without blemish, God without a spot or a wrinkle. And I know, God, that I cannot achieve that on my own. I know, God, that I cannot make that happen, God, because I, I know that it is impossible for me. But God, I'm praying right now that you forgive me for any lingering thing that's in my life. I'm praying that you forgive me for any transgression or sin. I'm praying that you even forgive me, God, of unbelief, God, that I would doubt, Lord, what you are trying to do in my life. Help me, God, to be pleasing to you. Help me, God, to walk in your ways. God, help us all, God, as we pray together, God. Help us all, God, that we would be pleasing to you in everything we say and everything we do and every action we take. Help us, God, to be pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So good to be with you tonight. I miss you so much getting to be together with you. Some of you, it's been quite a while since I've seen you at all. But I'm so glad that you joined in tonight. God loves you. God bless you. And God wants you to be saved.